What's up everyone, my name is Michael and welcome to another episode. Today I want to discuss if this bike behind me is the ultimate do-it-all bike and yeah, maybe I should uh, consider just keeping this one and pretty much getting rid of uh, all my other bikes and yeah, using that money for uh, something else. So stay tuned and uh, let's dive into it. So yeah, the bike, or uh, yeah, better to say the frame that I'm talking about, is this beautiful Fahrtfinder by the Berlin-based company called Standard. It is a frame that's made out of steel, um, particularly, I mean, it says Spirit Steel here in the back, but then it also says uh, Columbus Selected Tubing uh, on the down tube. So I guess there is a mix in there of Spirit Tubes and uh, some other tube sets. Uh, standard isn't like super transparent on what's being used where but uh, I guess it is a mix because if it would be spirit I guess it would be a little bit lighter than it actually is. So just to quickly talk about the specs of this bike uh, the frame itself is around 1850 grams and the fork is 450 grams so it's not a super lightweight bike but if you use the right components to build it up you can actually achieve a pretty uh, lightweight setup. So even though it is steel it is quite modern it has a T47 bottom bracket that's the one that it comes with and it also has uh, yeah a nice uh, Chris King headset up in the front so these are the main components that also come with the frame and this is the way how I bought it and the rest is yeah pretty much assembled by me so let's quickly talk about why I chose a steel frame to be the potential do-it-all bike so just a little bit of background I was riding a bunch of carbon frames over the past years also one aluminum frame in there I think they're great, they're super light, they look fantastic, especially the carbon ones. But um, I was always quite stressed whenever I had to throw my bike into the back of my car or strap it on top of my car. Um, or whenever we've been at coffee stops and I've seen like other people's bikes fall over that have been le leaning against my bike and so on and so forth. So I was always worried that with aluminum, I'm either gonna dent it and then I can kind of throw it away or with carbon, I'm gonna crash it, it's gonna fall down, something's gonna fall on it, um, something that may be too heavy is sitting on the frame when it's in the car, things like this. Um, and especially with carbon, there is this thing that you don't really see if there is damage, and if there is damage, you might have to do an x-ray. That's cost, uh, fixing it, that's cost. With aluminum or aluminum, it is a little bit easier because of course there obviously you see the damage if there is a dent in there or not. But yeah, of course it's easier to get a dent into an aluminum or a carbon frame, at least in my opinion, than a steel frame. So with this steel frame and also that's why I'm uh, riding a bunch of other steel bikes as well, it's just that I have peace of mind that whatever happens, I can throw it in my car, it can fall over, I mean, of course I'm trying not to, to not damage the beautiful paint job, but if it does, it's not such a big problem. And yeah, in general, I just feel that it is a very safe material. And yeah, the slight weight penalty that you might have from it, uh, yeah, it's definitely worth it for me to have that uh, extra peace of mind here. So yeah, officially uh, this frame has tire clearance for up to 35 millimeters, um, but to be honest, I was riding this out um, on a gravel ride, which is actually, I think, one of my first or second gravel rides that I ever did, with these beautiful Pana Racer, um, Pana Racer Gravel King, um, and they are actually 38 Cs, so, um, Slightly wider than the spec is officially communicating, but there was absolutely no problem. There was still some space in there and yeah, was quite safe to fit them.
because I already got attacked by a dog. Fell through the sand. So yeah, I think these Gravel King, I guess semi-slick ones, definitely enough for sand. So yeah, maybe the selection of this particular tire wasn't the super smartest one, um, but I was kind of like looking for a hybrid that would allow me to, um, yeah, not have too, um, too much rolling resistance issues on uh, the street, but also something that would work on uh, light gravel as well, which actually worked perfectly on light gravel. The issue was when I was riding through sand, um, yeah, that, that profile and that width didn't really give me enough grip there. So let's quickly talk about the components that I've used on this frame. The group set is a little bit of a Wild West one, but in general, the brain is uh, Shimano Jura Ace Di2. So the rear derailleur is a uh, Dura Ace Di2 and the front derailleur is a Dura Ace Di2 as well. The crank set is uh, an Ultegra one. It's uh, actually a Magine Ultegra one, so it has a Magine power meter on it. The STIs, so the shifters are also from the Ultegra collection. And yeah, other than that, I got some carbon handlebars from uh, Pro. I got uh, the beautiful Uno stem that I'm using on a lot of my bikes. So a great AliExpress, very lightweight aluminum stem. Um, then I got a Synthase P6 seat post, also made out of carbon. And um, of course, my beautiful Pro logo. Um, yeah, seat, the 143 version. And as you see in the setup currently, it's not set up with my gravel wheels, but it's set up with nice, very light, 50 millimeter deep section carbon wheels from a company called Drive. So a company that I actually really like. I have um, also their 50 millimeter rim brake version on my seven kilogram um, steel bike, the Klein Concept one. And uh, yes, this is actually the first uh, disc brake set um, that I have from them. And so far I'm pretty impressed because they're very lightweight. I'm gonna put in the weight somewhere in here. And um, yeah, I equipped them with some Continental GP5000s my favorite tire so far on the market. Cassette wise, I'm having an 1132 cassette mounted here. This is actually one of those lightweight uh, cassettes that you find on AliExpress. And um, yeah, great price performance and weight ratio here. And uh, yeah, so far no complaints. Shifts great with uh, the Di2. So yeah, what's my thinking here? Um, I'm having a little bit of an issue with the amount of bikes that I'm just accumulating. And the question is, am I just accumulating them for no reason? So just, um, to do a little inventory now real quick. So I got the Yoli R12 here, which is a carbon aero frame. Then I have my uh, original very first Klein concept, which is based on a Dacordi steel frame. Then I have the second Klein concept, the one with the disco paint that you also know from the full build video. Um, then I have a BMC T machine. And um, then I have this standard Pathfinder, and then I have another Klein concept in the making, which is actually based on a carbon frame from a company called Kreidler, um, which I somehow managed to get like a ridiculously good deal on. So this is one that I repainted myself and I'm kind of building it up as a budget kind of build. And uh, yeah, there's also gonna be a build video for that, of course, coming up on the channel. So yeah, the question is why do I, or I know a lot of you as well, keep accumulating more and more bikes? Like, am I a professional rider? Am I actually riding races? Even if I would be riding races on uh, like a non-professional level, would those frames really make a difference? Like, would I really need a lightweight frame for the climbs? Would I really need an aero frame for the flats? Um, yeah, that is the question. And can't I just have one frame with, uh, yeah, potentially just two sets of wheels that you swap out 
and you're good to go. And yeah, so far with this configuration, I'm actually very happy, like even on the gravel uh, ride, which of course it was light gravel, it was a little bit through the woods, but nothing intense, like no single track stuff, for example. So I was totally fine with uh, this two by setup and the rear derailleur not being a GRX, so not having the clutch in there. Um, yeah, so I didn't have any issues there. You might want to question if you're riding like proper hardcore gravel and you're also hitting a single track here and there, then maybe having a Jura Ace uh, Di2 on there might not make that much sense. And yes, the drive wheels that I talked about, I actually just received them two or three weeks ago um, and I had them on the bike and I've been taking some rides uh, here in Berlin because summer came back. And I have to say, I was really loving it. Like it feels great um, to ride this bike, which I think per default is designed as a gravel frame also with this uh, with this tire clearance but it feels great in uh, road bike mode so it feels super fast i mean i guess the deep section of the wheels also plays a big role in that um, but yeah position wise it also feels great it doesn't feel like too upright there you can get aggressive of course not as aggressive as uh, potentially on an aero bike that you slam but i would say for me absolutely good enough so what i want to say it doesn't really feel like a compromise it doesn't feel like a compromised bike when i have it in road mode like right now and it also didn't feel for me like a compromised bike when i was riding it in gravel mode yeah the only thing i did of course which i forgot to mention is um, in gravel mode i swapped out my uh, speed plate pedals for some shimano spd pedals um, and shoes so it's easier to get out of there when you're actually going through the sand and uh, through the gravel but other than that, it didn't really feel like a compromise at all, even in that mode. So yeah, what's the verdict? Um, to be honest, I think I really love the idea of just having one frame, one bike. There's one thing that you maintain. There's one thing that you upgrade. Um, yeah, and just one bike that you kind of take everywhere with you. I think there is something romantic to it. But... Uh, yeah, I mean, a couple of days ago, I just ordered another uh, standard Triebwerk frame, which is, uh, yeah, a, a road specific frame, uh, which is also made out of steel. It's actually not that much lighter than this one is. I think the geometry is just slightly different and uh, I prefer the paint job a little bit more. And um, yeah, somehow I ended up in the typical cliche of uh, yeah needing N plus one bikes pretty much all the time so to be honest i don't really understand um, the systematics in my head about this addiction of like needing more and more bikes um, even though i'm not that professional to notice that big of a difference between those bikes but somehow owning a lot of them also has something to it um, especially when they're like beautiful pieces of art you know like this one or like the other bikes so um yeah maybe if you made up your mind um why you think it is this way that we just keep accumulating more and more bikes let me know in the comments because this is really a topic that i'm really interested in and of course also a topic that my girlfriend would be really interested in because uh yeah she's the one that's dealing with a lot of bikes in uh, our surrounding you know and it's not easy it's not always easy. Okay, so, and there's one thing that I almost forgot. Um, I'd say let's maybe weigh the whole bike all together and let's find out how um, heavy it actually is. So for this, I'm gonna be taking my trusty Y-Hang, um, actually interesting name, Y-Hang. Yeah, uh, yeah Y-Hang scale. Um, yeah, let's set it up to be kilograms and let's go. So let's hang it in here. Let's pull it up. Okay. 854. I'd say not so bad. So also just to give a little bit perspective and a little bit of summary, um, I have to say I really, really love it. Um, it is great that you have all that tire clearance in there that you can ride it on gravel. And um, yeah, I mean, you've seen the, the drone shots from the Hover X1 drone, by the way, um, with a little review here in case you're interested in more uh, about that. I really, really loved it, riding it, especially in road mode. So it feels super responsive, very comfortable, of course, because it is a steel frame after all. So yeah, overall, just a great bike, really, really fun to ride with. And um, yeah, you have that peace of mind 
of uh, yeah, riding a steel frame and of course the additional comfort, especially when you compare it to a carbon frame. But yeah, unfortunately for me, the gravel side of things, it didn't really hook me in that much. So I expect that this bike is mainly going to stay in road mode. And I think that's totally fine. And it looks great in that mode. So yeah, let me know what you think about this, um, about this bike, about the setup, about the flexibility. Maybe you have uh, questions towards the setup, just drop them in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, if you like that kind of content, hit that like button and uh, consider subscribing. And yeah, with that, I'd say thanks a lot for watching and see you in the next one. Bye.